So state-of-the-art in deep learning is really starting to explore uh, data sets that have not been touched before. So for example, uh, just about three or four years ago, data sets were things like ImageNet, which was a common image repository that was freely available, freely downloadable, and there were competitions based on this. There still are today. And people compete against each other on that one common data set to say, can they develop and, and understand new techniques to deep learning? But nowadays, uh, there's so much progress has been made in the last three or four years uh, to basically get to the point where um, you know, deep learning can not only recognize people's faces better than humans can, but they're also getting to the point where they're playing video games better than people can. And now the state of the art is moving into fields where, uh, like for example, scientific data sets. You know, how can we understand biology? How do we understand chemistry, uh, physics, uh, climate, all the uh, material science, all these different science fields now deep learning and machine learning are moving into these fields to say, can they help us better classify our data sets and learn new things that we wouldn't have otherwise seen because the scientific data sets are becoming so huge now, uh, it's almost impossible for a single person to go through those data sets manually. And so if we can have a machine go through those data sets and classify things for us at accuracies that are as good or better than a person and do it significantly faster, that helps the human scientists then speed up the discovery process quite a bit.